Uh, my good was Xander Shoffley, birdied the 72nd hole to win the PGA Championship yesterday. I've described Xander as the guy most likely to choke in crunch time on the PGA Tour. Everyone else called him the best player that hasn't won a major. He actually, I believe, last week as well had a lead and then ended up losing to Rory by five, if I'm not mistaken. Tyler could probably uh, dot the I's and cross the T's here on the golf details. But he finally came through and closed the deal and uh, won with a birdie on the final hole, which was very clutch. So my good was Xander Shoffley winning the PGA Championship and kind of shredding the concept that he can't get the deal done in, in crunch time. A few Timberwolves did the same thing. Like, they were the Shoffleys of the NBA, yeah. you know what I mean? Down yeah. the stretch, maybe someone's going to pull that out. Um, I'm going to go with this video that I sent you guys. I don't know if uh, people caught it. Like, it was uh, all the rookies, first-rounders were together this weekend. I believe they were out in California because I think they were on USC's field as they were, like, uh, showing off the new uniforms, their new team uniforms. Um, Rome was there, and Caleb Williams was there. And then they got together for a breakfast, and at this breakfast was Tom Brady and Jay-Z were the featured guests. Michael Rubin from Fanatics was also there. Those are the three voices you're going to hear in this. If you haven't seen this on social media, it's really good. You'll hear it here with the audio version of of and you it, it starts with Brady and and he's they're giving them lessons on work ethic and what they need to to do as they enter the NFL. This is just gold. When you have 53 guys on the team and you think it's about you, it ain't about you. It's about us. And the biggest problem I see with a lot of the young players today, you guys are making it too much about I and me because of social media, because of branding and all that. It's fine. You're not going to win. There was a difference between being a star and being a champion. Your talent gets you there. You know, your work ethic and your discipline takes you to where you want to be. Every day of practice is important. You know why? Because when I was on the Patriots and we had 20 years winning, every day was a big day. I treated a preseason game I treated a regular team like it was a Super Bowl. So when I got to the Super Bowl, it was just another day for me. You got to know who you are because those moments going to come. You're going to be down 28 to 0. You got to say, all right, I know who I am. I'm going to go get it. I'm unrelenting. Like, I will not quit in anything I do. And I, I never got there on, you know, educational background. I never got there on, on skill. It just It was work ethic and hustle. There should be nobody in your life that should have higher expectations for you than you. You're going to evolve or you're not. You're going to keep evolving or you're not. And if you're not, the world still spins. If you're forever curious, you'll always keep getting better. And I love that Caleb Williams was like right next to Brady as well, soaking it all in. And I know they they have texted throughout this offseason. We've heard about that from Caleb Williams firsthand. But that's just very cool to hear from those three guys who are just self-made men. Good I hadn't stuff. seen that or, or, or heard that prior to you sending that out to us today. That was really cool. That was a really good message by all three guys. Yep. Uh, what do you got, Tyler? What's your good? My good, it was a bad weekend for the Cubs, but another great start from Shota Imanaga. Seven wow. shutout innings, seven strikeouts, only allowed four hits to the Pirates. And it's unfortunate that it, they only could muster up one run in that game, but he now has since lowered his league leading ERA to .84 for Shota Imanaga. Was Bellinger safe? I don't think he was. I think he was. I thought he got the toe down. Did you? I I thought he did. I didn't think he got the toe down, and then he definitely hits the ball out after. I, I was, I mean, I, I'm concerned about this play at the plate luck that the Cubs are getting earlier in the season, because if that, that pendulum out. starts to swing the other way, we could be uh, in for some very frustrating losses as if the losses already enough have not been frustrating enough. Right, right. Kevbo, what do you got? Well, you mentioned it, uh, a little bit earlier the Minnesota Timberwolves last night uh, punching their ticket to the next round of the postseason. For my money, Anthony Edwards is the most fun player to watch in the league right now. And I saw somebody on Twitter call him the Wizard of Oz because he gave Carl Anthony Towns a heart and Rudy Gobert courage. I love that. That's what good. a great nickname that is. That is good. Yeah, those two, that's what I was alluding to. Those two guys who are known as guys who have disappeared, they played big at times in the fourth quarter. I mean, they weren't the – like, Nas Reed was so great, and then Edwards was awesome. But Gobert and Cat had two 
a couple of different times had huge plays in the fourth quarter to help uh, ice that game. And that which... leads me to my bad yeah. because as much as we all want to compliment what the T-Wolves did, which was fantastic, the Nuggets blew a 53-38 halftime lead as the defending champions in their own building. That's bad. I know Malone, their coach, wasn't happy afterwards. How could you be? He was a little salty. How could you not be salty? But you can't blow a 15-point halftime lead. I believe at one point, didn't the lead get up to 20 at one yes, point? Yes, it was at 20. It was the biggest blown, I believe, second-half lead in a Game 7 uh, in the postseason in, in this um, millennium. Yeah, that's like in the I last mean, 25 years. Do you call that a choke job or you say that the T-Wolves went out and won that game or a combination of both? I think it's both, but I think when you're the champs and you're at home and you don't protect a 20-point mid-third quarter lead. That's on you. That qualifies as a choke. Yeah, for sure. So that's my bad. Um, I, I'm going to build on what Tyler had to say it, 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 through some of his good and it was so frustrating watching the Cubs lose three out of four to the Pirates, and it easily could have been a sweep job in a four-game series if not for that play at the plate where they won one to nothing. Even the win is frustrating because they don't score. So if it's not the bullpen that's letting you down the bats, and I know they've been injured. A lot of teams are injured, though, right now. This team scored 10 runs against the Pirates in four games. And it's the guys who are healthy who are just not hitting. Ian Happ, we talked about last week, Waddle. Um, he, he is usually not a good first-half player, but he's got to be way better than he's playing right now. There's just not enough going on offensively with the Cubs, and they are blowing great starting pitching. And, and that's the most frustrating part of this whole thing. So they need re I don't know what they're going to do. Maybe, you know, these guys come back and Seah starts picking up where he left off after he gets into more of a rhythm and Swanson comes back. And by the way, the Cubs totally miscalculated the Nico Horner injury to not have him for a week and to not IL him and to play a man short when you're already struggling offensively. That's a huge bad uh, from the Cubs front office. So it's just bad all the way around. And right now the offense is leading the way. You, you know, the, there's no one in their starting eight has a batting average over 265 other than Saya. Horner's 269, but he's out. Yeah. So Saya was your leading hitter. And we say what you want about batting averages, but it is still a measuring stick. Nobody that was in the game yesterday started the game yesterday position players had a, a batting average above 265 like they've got six. patrick wisdom as a leadoff header yeah. because he's like the only guy hitting the ball what does that say michael bush has certainly come down to earth it's yeah, crazy it's, it's like they we had high hopes and we may still but they've got a they really have like i said on friday a lot of fires to put out right now the house ain't all on fire, but there are there are a lot of little fires going on that they have to extinguish. Yep. Tyler, what do you got? Uh, my bad is the performance from Colin Morikawa on Sunday. His putting, he made thirty four about thirty four and a half feet worth of putts. For those who want to know, like do the quick math on that. That's less than two foot, two feet for uh, per putt there. He, this was a golf course that was ripe for the taking, and he shot even after he uh, was the co-leader alongside Xander Shoffley heading into Sunday. It was not a good putting performance at all. He was Shoffley. He, he, he Shoffley really was. Imitation. He gave it away. He had every chance, as much as Shoffley did, to go out and win that golf tournament, and he could not putt for his life. I and what do you got, Kevbo? Tyler had a 32-1 to 1 ticket on Mark. I know, too. right. I, I knew. I remembered that, yeah. He's yeah. frustrating guy to bet on. Uh, yeah. more because he's so damn talented Kevbo, what do you got it was a very bad sunday for your boy now it was the final day of the premier league season uh my team arsenal did not win the championship and also i lost in the finals of my fantasy soccer league so it was a uh, a double whammy for me yesterday how sorrows people, were drowned how many people participate in fantasy soccer uh, like, it's a 12 person league hundred dollar buy-in so we, with is mallers it, miller it, in it that's a different league. I didn't do well in that one either. Is it popular? Is fantasy soccer popular? 
Yeah, I, I feel like it's definitely uh, gaining popularity, you know, as the league kind of becomes bigger and, and more popular itself here in the uh, the States. More fun, that or uh, fantasy baseball? Fantasy baseball is too much work. You got right. to log in, change your lineup every single day. This, this way, you only have to do it a couple times a week. Okay. Um, let's get to the dirties on the other side of this. Um, it's Waddle and Sylvie. We're on here now after a White Sox. If you want to win. Radio in, idiots. Th- two radio idiots. What, what, what is it? Radio losers, losers. Radio losers. Radio losers. 312-332-3776. It's ESPN. We're finishing up the good, the bad, the dirty. Brought to you by our great friends uh, over at the Sanctuary Golf Course. Waddle, what's your dirty? I wrote down Shota, but you guys already covered that. So I'll segue to the, did you see this stat about the White Sox in their three game, getting swept in three games by the Yankees, their strikeout totals, 10, 16, and eight in three games. That's 34 strikeouts over a three game series. So that's pretty dirty. Not, not surprised. It's, I guess they had been playing better, but you knew yeah. that going into Yankee Stadium was going to be They were 8-4 and four in the previous 12 games before the Yankee series. But come on. Yeah. You struck out 10 times, 16 times, and 8 times, 34 strikeouts in three games. That's dirty. Not a lot of offense over the weekend by Chicago baseball teams. Um, my dirty is, can you pull up the, the Barkley and uh, Ant thing? This is good from last night. And and there's a funny side note to it. Uh, I, I'm sure you've heard this by now. This was post-game yesterday. Barkley talking about how the TNT crew now is going to Minneapolis as a uh, show. Take a listen. Okay. I have not been to Minnesota in probably 20 years. Bring yes. <laughs> that was, how great was that? First of all, it, it's dirty good. Second of all, there was a side story that someone tweeted out. I don't know if you saw this. He says he hasn't been to Minnesota in 20 years, Barkley. And someone said, I was standing next to Charles Barkley in 2019 at the NCAA tournament. When Auburn got beat. Yeah. yeah. He was there five years ago. Yeah. I, mean, I guess he was thinking NBA related. Maybe that's the situation. And he just forgot where he was. For the NCAA tournament, but it's hilarious. Bring your ass. But bring and, your ass. It, it, it's, and that's so good. Like he he's so he's he's so good on the court and off the court. Did you hear him and Cat too after the game? Yeah, about that was losing. good too. Yeah, we could play yeah. that. Do you have that too, Kevbo? That was a comedy show. Sure do. This is for either one of you guys. It, and usually in NBA history, it says you have to lose and lose big before you win. What is it about this team that says we lost not? last year? Yeah, but that, that that's different. You have to lose at a bigger stage. Usually teams. Usually it's the playoffs. Lose. We lost last year. <laughs> we lost the last two years. <laughs> how much more we got to lose? Yeah, how much you want us to lose? We've been losing for 20 years. <laughs> I mean, that's just the truth, dog. Damn. <laughs> they were good. They were good. Yeah. Great stuff. Good last night. All right, Tyler, what do you got? Brian, yes. <laughs> My dirty from the weekend was uh, Bryson DeChambeau threw a ball to a young fan uh, after he had finished up the 10th hole, I believe, and then an adult stepped in oh, to take this. the ball from the kid. Bryson stopped mid-stride and instructed the man to give the ball to the kid like he had intended, stopping his round in the process. Bryson DeChambeau, good guy for that. Dirty on the fan who stole the ball from the kid. Yeah, what's we're, wrong we're, with we're possessions? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm with you. What are they thinking? I like, I oh, I, I got the golf ball. What, what are you going to do with the golf ball? You're a grown-ass man. Grown-ass man taking a golf ball away from a kid at a golf tournament. Yeah, like at least That's Tyler knows... Go Tyler, home and look in the mirror. Tyler knows to save the nachos over the ball. Exactly. All right, uh, Kevbo, wrap us up. My dirty is quite literal. I am down to my last clean T-shirt. I need to do laundry. That's it. What? What do you mean? You? You? How? How long have you gone without? Do you have very few T-shirts, or have you not done laundry in weeks? I have very few quarters with which to do laundry. So that has been the issue to me. I've been rationing. So how long has it been, though? It's been a minute. I can't remember the last time I went downstairs to do laundry. It's been, I am running low on everything right now. It's dire. Just turn them inside out like your underwear. Rewear them.
I, no, that's that's not a real thing. Oh yes, you, it is. Do you get do you get more than one day use of a T-shirt? Oh yeah, unless I'm like spilling or, or you know being a, a, a dumbass. Yeah, wanna, I get a couple. Well, days you are out of one bed. lazy. Sure, yeah, dude, aren't you? Yes. You want to take a guess what shirt he's wearing right now? White socks. It's a black white sock shirt. It is a black shirt. It is not a white socks shirt. It is a black Bahamas <laughs> shirt with the slogan, it's better here on it. <laughs> Never been to the Bahamas, by the way. You, dude, who bought you the shirt then? My, my like, parents, they were in the Bahamas. Like, oh, you like black t-shirts? Here's another one for the collection. When did, that like, you're I'm, never going to wash. Wh- how, old do you, how old are you when, when your parents stop bringing you back t-shirts? Oh, they'll never stop. If they, haven't stopped, if they haven't stopped by now, it's... How old's the shirt? <laughs> Months. It is a new Months. shirt. This is the first time I've ever worn it. This is great. Your mom and dad still bring you back a t-shirt when they go yeah, away. They're thoughtful. They're thoughtful we got you people. You souvenir. That is sweet. Yeah, very, oh, very sweet very people. Sweet. Also, I'm a spoiled adult man. <laughs> they bring Who you needs- back some puka shells from <laughs> the Bahamas as well. We should send you some quarters while they're at it. That would help. Maybe they're listening. Keep, keep your t-shirt gifts and give me some quarters. I'm bringing in some quarters.